Shall we rise and greet everyone a happy Sabbath? A little exercise, you know, won't hurt. Okay, now we're going to have our, uh, the, uh, our announcements, what we have uh, for these following days. Upcoming events, fellowship lunch. You know that our lunch today is haystack, right? I hope everyone likes haystack. Because if you don't, you will be sorry. Because haystack, I love haystack. It's all vegetarian. So please stay, enjoy the lunch. So we thank all of the all of those our chefs who had given their time, their talents, and so many other things just to make this uh, fellowship lunch a success. So appreciate all of them, okay? Men's ministries uh, after our service at the pastor study, we're going to have our prayer warriors, the men's ministry prayer warriors. Okay, men. Please join in. Thank you. Pathfinders today, right, Ashley? You have them today at the primary classroom. Uh, uh, we, we're going to have also our Woodland Oaks uh, uh, ministry today at 2.30 p.m. Uh, come and join us uh, if you want to uh, give joy to those old folks. They really, really appreciate it. The 2.30 this afternoon. Uh, prayer and Bible study. This Wednesday, I forgot to ask. I think, uh, Brother John, are you leading the uh, prayer meeting this Wednesday? Uh, I guess I am now. I yeah. We can give it to uh, Brother Sim if he wants to. Brother Sim? Okay, Brother Sim, did you hear that? I second the motion. I third. 
and fourth, <laughs> fifth. Uh, Brother Sam is going to lead out. It's coming Wednesday at seven o'clock. There is a exciting news, but I cannot tell it to you yet. It will come, okay? So uh, just hold on, and that will be a blessing for each one of us. Growing together in Christ, this is the Eastern Kentucky Camp Meeting. It will be on March 24th and 25th. If you want to come, if you want to enjoy the, uh, the camp meeting for the Eastern Kentucky, you, uh, there is a, uh, on, on the next slide, uh, here is the, uh, the address, the 24th at 7 o'clock in the evening, Prestonsburg SDA Church. I've never been there in the Pestensburg Church, but someday I will. March 25th at 10 a.m., the First United Methodist Church. And the address is there too. So if you want the address, put it in your, uh, your GPS, you'll be able to uh, arrive there safely. Uh, please pray for all the ministries of the church. We are a small church, but the church, but the members here are very supportive of all of our ministries. Please pray for the, all of them. And uh, these ministries will not exist without you, without your support. So please support it by your prayers, by your uh, cooperation, and your financial donations as well. Thank you. Our speaker this morning is Elder John Rickey. Please pray for him. When in doubt, pray. This morning, uh, I hope Sarah is here already. Um, I think he's coming very soon. But we have two songs for you. It's very, uh, oh, you have something, Ashley? Announce this again. It wasn't on there, um, but and I don't want to be too repetitive on this. But um, as you know, our youth are planning on going to summer camp this summer. I've got uh, several going to ICC, which is a six-hour drive away, and then I've got a couple oh. going to Camp Mohaven. Camp Mohaven. I always get the Mo, but then I forget the rest of it, and that's in um, Ohio. Um, we are looking for some sponsorships. It is around $300 per student to be able to go for the whole week. So if you feel led to uh, help us get our kids to these camps, we would appreciate it. And you can just mark on your tithe envelope, um, summer camp, and we will get that to the kids on their accounts with the conferences that they need to go to so that they can go. Thank you. Thank you. Our first song is, uh, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. I think that's the main reason we're here, right? Yes. It's because all of us have decided to follow Jesus. And we're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And uh, let's see. I have decided. Okay. Let's sing this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. 
the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no, no turning back, no turning back. Amen. So when we decide to follow Jesus, should we turn back? No, no turning back. Yes. Rejoice in the Lord always. 155. Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. One more time. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Amen. And now we're going to start a divine worship. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Our call to worship this morning is number 724 in the back of your hymnals. I'll read the light print and you follow with the dark. O oh Lord, you have searched me. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my setting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before, and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you have formed my inward parts. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Shall we rise? Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power 
Heavenly Father, on this Sabbath morning, we once again are grateful that we can all come and glorify your name, Lord, and be with you and be with us as we do just that, to worship you. We're thankful for the Sabbath and for you, Lord, and your leadership. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Amen. Surely the presence Thank you. 
seated. Okay, it is now time for our tithe and offerings. Our offering today is for the Adventist World Radio. Just over a year ago, hardened assassins from the New People's Army in Mindro, Philippines, laid down their guns and chose a new life and baptism after listening to Adventist World Radio and studying with local Adventist pastors. No longer former rebels, but fully recounseled. These men and women wanted to get right to get right to work in sharing what they had found with their family, neighbors, and friends. Just after their big baptism, they declared that they would, they would each reach one. They decided amongst themselves that each of them would lead someone to Jesus so they would soon have 700 people ready for baptism. Only a couple of months later, 700 more former rebels had given their lives to Jesus as a, result, as a result of these converted friends witnessing to them. They had used the projectors and Bible study materials Adventist World Radio had given them, and by February 2022, they had already reached their goal for the year. Adventist World Radio is currently working with these new believers so that each of their villages will have a church building. In addition, they are helping, they are helping Adventist World Radio reach into places like Min Mindanao to reach current rebels and assassins whose lives would also be changed with the love of Jesus. Please pray for Adventist World Radio as its radio waves travel, travel to some of the most difficult places on earth, including the Middle East and North Korea, to help each and every nation, tribe, language, and people in Revelation 14, 6. Will the deacons come forward? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray that you will be with us all as we return our tithe and offerings, an offering to help these people in faraway nations to learn about you and to go from their assassin ways and their rebel ways and come to you, Jesus, we pray that you will be with all of us and help us to love you and help others know about you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is now time for our children's story given to us this morning by Capricia Howard.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Have any of you all ever been to a king's palace? Wonder what it would like to be there. Do you think you would run around and talk loudly, maybe slide down their stairs? Do you think you would act that way in a king's palace? Probably not. What about would you push your brother or your sister? Would you be mean and talk out loud? I, I doubt that. Or what if the king would talk to you? Do you think he you would ignore him when he asked you a question? Probably not, no. I'm sure you all would be on your very best behavior. You would listen to your parents while you're there. You would use your manners and say please and thank you. And you wouldn't break anything while you were there, would you? Okay, one last question. You would be on your best behavior, okay? And it is because, why? Because it's, the king is an important place, a person, and it's important that, they, that you be on your best behavior there because they have a lot of nice things, right? And you just know you're in a fancy place, so you're going to be on your very best behavior. So this lesson is about how we should behave in God's house. Church is a special place. It's a place where we learn more about God and we worship him. Now, God doesn't actually live there because God is everywhere, right? But it is one of the special places that we can go just to honor him without any kind of distractions on the outside world. Have you ever noticed that people dress up when they go to church? <laughs> That's because people are trying to be respectful to God and they get ready to worship him. Have you ever wondered why people close their eyes when they worship and pray? People do that so they can think about what they're praying to God. We, have a, we bow our heads because God is our king, and he deserves the respect like a king and so much more. When you are respectful, you listen to others and treat others the way that you would like to be treated. So how can you respect others at church? By treating the church like God's house and listening to your teachers and your parents, by walking instead of running, by using your quiet voice instead of your loud voice, instead of your loud voice. <laughs> your teacher spends lots of times getting ready for special Sabbath school lessons just for you. They care a lot about you, and they want you to learn important things about God. It makes them sad and disappointed if you don't listen. When we respect others, we are also respecting God. So you may have guessed that we aren't just supposed to be good in church, but we're supposed to be good everywhere, aren't we? Respecting everyone we pass by. Since God is everywhere, he can see how we treat others and if we are making them happy or sad. Now there's a verse in the Bible in Romans 12 and 10 that says, Love each other honestly and treat each other better than you would treat yourself. That means listening to your teachers at school, babysitters, parents, and grandparents. It also means respecting other people's things. Now start to think about, to, re, to think about respects everywhere you go, grocery stores and other people's houses and even restaurants. Sometimes it's important to be on your very best behavior, but your parents understand that sometimes you need to play, have playtime and to be loud. So let's have lots of fun, but just keep in mind that church is a special place to learn about God, and we need to treat it just like a king's palace because God is our king. Listen to your parents and teachers. They love you and want the very best for you, and that's how we can make God happy. Now, would anyone like to pray? Okay, well, I'll do it for us. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, your name is holy, and we praise you, Lord. Lord, help us. To, uh, under, to be blessed by your presence. Help us to bless others with you. Lord, help us, O oh Lord, to teach these children to be respectful in your church. Help us, O oh Lord, as we go about our day to showing others that we love you and let, our light, and let yours light shine through us, O oh God. We praise your name, Lord, and we love you. Help us, O oh Father, to thank you for everything that you do for us. Blessed be your name, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, here we go. I got you some presents here. Now, we know we're not going to open these up and get stuff all over the place, are we? We're going to throw this stuff away. Here you go. Here's your stuff right here. Here's your little bit. 
Here we go. Here you go, baby. Some gentle and gently. Thank you, Capricia. That was a well-stated children's story. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Uh, this morning, at, at our service now is, is going to be involving the praise and prayer requests of our congregation that they would like to announce. And so... I'll open it up for Ashley to begin. Um, if you guys see my mom around here today, today is her birthday, and she's probably going to um, not be very happy with me for <laughs> announcing it. I, so I it I'm like, my... I'm going to get it now while she's not in here. <laughs> but um, if you see her, just tell her happy birthday. She's 21 again, in case you're wondering. That's, that was taking it right out of her, what she told me. Any other praises or prayer requests? Keep guarded in your prayers. Okay. Tony Hill, as kidney stone, which says. Uh, Cameron, I think Glenda and Randy both were. Did you not have your hand up, Glenn? I did. Uh, just pray for me. Tomorrow I'm taking my nephew, Damien, my sister's grandson that she has custody of. I had done Bible study with him for several months, and then when school was out, he kind of discontinued that because he was spending a good bit of the summer at his dad's. He has not chosen to request that we begin that again. And so I have invited him to... Uh, go to the Mexican restaurant with me tomorrow, and hopefully I can kind of see where his heart is mm -hmm. with the Lord. And just to, to, I never have time just to sit down and talk to him. He's 15, he'll be 16 this year, and and I think it's important to find out, you know, what's what's on their minds and to get a little closer and let, us, let it, them know that we do care about them and what's going on in their life. And I think he'll feel open to talk to me, so I hope it'll be a, a good time. You say that was your nephew? Mm -hmm. My great nephew. Great nephew. Oh, sorry. Uh, I know a lady whose 15-year-old daughter got angry at her parents because they took her cell phone away, and she called social services and reported that they were being abusive to her. Um, that family needs healing and peace in their household. Yes. Um, hi, Shirley. Hi. <laughs> Remember my nephew, Briar, in your, in your prayers? He uh, he was going to have a birthday party this evening, but he has strep throat, so I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> but just pray for him. Will do. Randy? Miracles do happen. I talk, got to talk to my son yesterday, the one that's in prison in Tennessee. Um, evidently, the Lord had different plans for what was going on because immediately after he talked to me the Friday before when he was afraid that he was going to be killed that night, they put the whole prison in lockdown. And everybody's locked down in the prison right now. So evidently, somebody was listening or 
to our conversation or God was listening and said, hey, I'm going to put in your mind that the person needs to be locked down. Right. So I just praise God for that. God can work miracles. Absolutely. Um, this Thank coming you. Monday, I have to go to school to have a meeting um, with a counselor and over Gabriella. So if you guys could just pray on that situation that we can get things cleared up and and everything. And then um, Bella, Mackenzie's friend, I did get more detail. Um, she had to have to stay in the hospital and they thought that maybe she can go over and stay at the Ronald McDonald house to get her treatments just by going over to the hospital. But her numbers wasn't good. So she ended up having to stay in the hospital and they're thinking that she can leave on Monday. So if you guys could just pray that she can at least come home for a little bit. Sure. Anyone else? Person. I just want to give God praise uh, for my brother who uh, was in the hospital with a collapsed lung. He's already home. He was home the other day, um, and he's doing well. He has to go back, um, and they're going to check and see why the whole, you know, how it, how it uh, came about and what caused it. Uh, but they're giving him time to get it healed and, um, you know, to see what procedure they will, will go from through there. But he's in a really uh, good mood. He's, he's, he's doing real well, and I just want to praise the Lord for that. I also want to give him praise for, you know, whenever I take uh, my grandson Carson to school every day, I uh, pray that, that God will, will be with him. And, um, you know, he's, he had an episode here not too long ago, and, and you know, things came about, and we weren't real sure. I, you know, I wasn't surprised about it. I, I was more surprised that it had taken so long for one to appear and was, you know, pl pleased about that and praised the Lord that it had taken that long, but, you know, just didn't know what was going to come about after that. And then it turns out that he had a... Uh, a field trip that was coming up and we wasn't even aware of it and he got to come to Ashland and we didn't realize it was just a few select students that got to go and it turns out he was on gifted and, and talented so we didn't even know that so he got to come <laughs> and he had a wonderful day he was really and I think he learned a lot about you know behavior and everything so I want to praise the Lord for that for being with him great appreciate you sharing that as well Anyone else? Unspoken prayers? Yeah, we, uh, I don't want to forget, and Dot just reminded me as well. Uh, my mother in law, Dot's mother, uh, Bonnie, uh, has been dealing with a um, health issue that uh, she had to go to the hospital and she's uh, had an uh, issue with uh, breathing. So, uh, but she is recovering, at least I believe she is, and, uh, uh, but continue to keep Bonnie, if you would, in your prayers. And if you are able at this time to kneel, let's do so and go to prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, again, on this uh, Sabbath morning, we're just so grateful that uh, you are our rock and our redeemer. We have uh, praises and prayer requests this morning that uh, fortunately, uh, not only 
uh, you know all of them, but you are a part of uh, each of those issues that not only were raised, but that were unspoken. When, our, when we raised our, our hands to, to uh, know that we have people in our lives and in our world that are in need of your tender and loving care. And we ask that you uh, be with each of us as we tend to each of them on this given day and at this given time. Lord, I would give names, but I'm more fearful of uh, forgetting names, and I don't want to do that. So fortunately, again, you are aware of, of what's going on with, with each person that's in here and, and uh, spoke up or didn't speak up but raised their hands. We're just so grateful, and, and we're celebrating uh, Sandy's birthday today. Uh, may she uh, enjoy the day and, and uh, live for many, many more years, if, uh, unless you are to come, Lord, uh, before... Uh, before then. So Lord, thank you again for each and every uh, praise that, that we heard this morning and prayer requests as well. We thank you, Lord, and in Jesus' precious and holy name, we say together, Amen. Amen. time for our special music given to us this morning by Severin. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this song I think has been sung two or three times before, but uh, even though songs get old, Praising God never gets old, amen? amen. <clears throat> this is in Christ alone. In Christ alone will I glory Though I could pride myself in battles won For I've been blessed beyond measure And by His strength alone I overcome I could stop and count successes Like diamonds in my hands but those trophies could not equal to the grace by which I stand. In Christ alone I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. In Christ alone will I glory, for only by his power I am redeemed. And only His tender mercy Could reach beyond my weakness To my need And now I seek no greater honor Than just to know Him more And to count my gains but losses in the glory of my Lord In Christ alone I place my trust And find my glory in the power of the cross In every victory 
Let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope in Christ alone. I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross in every victory. Let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone, is Christ alone, in Christ alone. Amen. Thank you, Dad. It's now time for our um, scripture reading by Ethan Damien. Today's scripture reading is Second Corinthians one, three, and four. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. And now John will give us our sermon. Thank you, Dot. And once again, thank you. Good, good morning, once again. Morning. Happy Sabbath. And I wanted to uh, share with you, in case you were expecting to see uh, Joe Hall from Moorhead uh, today, it was around the middle of the week that he contacted uh, me, and I spoke with him. But his, uh, he has a daughter or two daughters that were uh, testing positive for COVID, and he wanted to just play it safe and not uh, bring them along and, and uh, come this morning, to which I appreciated uh, the safety factor of it. And uh, so then it came to the point where, well, who's going to give the message? And it's, you know, it's the middle of the week. So, uh, uh, and I had, I kind of tried to, um, when I'm preparing to give a message to try and be a good month or two ahead. That's just me because at times I have had the privilege of being asked to, uh, to give a message. So I kind of put you know, some things together as far as that's concerned, very loosely put together. But when it came time at the middle of this week for uh, a message to be given, I volunteered to move that loosely put together message that I had for April, actually, uh, and would probably try and do it, or would try and uh, would do it this morning, as far as that's concerned. So, uh, and Garnet, uh, I got on the phone with Garnet because James, uh, husband James, uh, was the one who initially called to tell me that, that Joe Hall was not going to be able to make it. Going and said, "Oh, I'll I'll be uh, more than happy to you know serve as on the platform with you." Well, then she has not been feeling well, and fortunately, uh, Dot has accepted to uh, on a late situation, if you will. Uh, so, but I'm always grateful that uh, that Dot uh, is on the platform with or without me, but because I think she does a great job when she's here. But I happen to be here as well, so I'm grateful that she was available to come as well. And as it come, well, let me get my notes. I got a little, little uh, personal uh, testimony that I want to share with you, aside from what I just did. Um, back in high school, I had to, I had to, because I, believe it or not, I was very shy. 
I uh, just didn't, I just wasn't very personable in, in my opinion. Um, I just wanted to play baseball in Yankee Stadium or Shea Stadium. That was all I wanted to do. And, um, and so I was kind of to myself and kind of a loner. But uh, so I took a speech class. My guidance counselor suggested that I do that. And in that speech class, or that teacher back in the uh, old days, uh, said there's basically, uh, from his perspective, uh, there's three parts to a, to a speech. Whenever you're going to give a speech, there should be a, a, a beginning and a middle and then a conclusion. And I had, again, those parts for my April message in here. I had those parts, you know, kind of putting them together, but they were very loosely put together. And I didn't have an opening. Didn't have an opening. And so I began to fret. That's the word I use, F-R-E-T-T-E-D. I fretted uh, Thursday. And you know I knew about it on Wednesday, but I kind of was putting together my, my, me my middle message and my conclusion, but Gosh, that, you know, how do I open it up? I just can't seem to come up with the words. And um, I had already filled out and told Sally and Vicki what uh, I was, you know, planning to do in terms of songs and all that and the message title, et cetera, et cetera. But here I was fretting over how am I going to begin my, my message because I've got the middle and the back or the end kind of in place, but can't get that. So then I looked at my little index card. Uh, this is a true story. I looked at my index card for some reason or another, and on that index card, which had, you know, the, the uh, hymns and the scripture reading and the message, at the bottom it said message title, and it says right here, and it, the message title is correct. When in doubt pray. The light bulb came on in, in John's head at that moment in time and said, John, because sometimes I do speak to myself. I said, John, you've wasted 24 to 48 hours fretting over what you're going to start out with in your message to your congregation uh, on, on Sabbath morning. And you didn't even follow your own instruction to pray took me about, you know, so I, I bowed my head. And the good Lord basically said, um, John, if you tell them about your issue that you've already had, the testimonial that, that I've just shared with you about starting and whatever, use that as your beginning. And I, and I, amen, and I thanked him. And I just had this peace of mind has been spoke about earlier during, during the, uh, the Sabbath school lesson. When you pray and you give it to the Lord, that peace of mind that comes over you and, and over me when we do that uh, is just joyful, for lack of a better way of saying it. And so uh, it's, again, very easy for me, and I'm speaking for myself, to have Satan every once in a while try to interfere with the joys that you have or the, the easiness that you could make from it if you just pray about it. Just pray about it and see what happens as a result. So anyway, that's the beginning of my message this morning is to, uh, and it's probably going to be part of my conclusion as well, but I went through a period of 24 to 48 hours fretting over what am I going to say in the, to start my talk, which is what my speech teacher back in high school kind of taught me to do whenever I'm going to give a talk. And I've now given it, and now I'm ready to give the middle part of my message. I do believe uh, that fear <laughs> keeps us from becoming who God wants us to be, and can be downright crippling, even forcing us to hide who you and I really are. 
Now, it's easy to have faith when everything is going our way. But when the chips are down, it's human nature to start doubting. We don't need to be afraid when we are walking with Jesus. With God holding our hands, you and I cannot fail. There's no need to be afraid of what we will look like or what someone else may say. Why lay awake worrying about what others think? It only matters what God thinks. And we need not compare our lives to others, as we have no idea what their journey is all about. Instead, we should live our lives for Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and guide our every decision. So pray and ask God to remove all the fears from your life and replace it with faith and trust. And when you are weak or you, when you feel like those old fears are trying to creep back in, pray for strength, claiming Philippians 4, 13. And I believe, I know, God will give it to you. So when life seems to be too much to bear, and maybe it is for one or many of us, when life seems to be too much to bear and everything looks dreary, walk by faith, not by sight. Take each step with confidence in God rather than by your own feelings. Pray for the gift of self-control to keep you from falling into the, to the pits of depression, I call it, or fear, or darkness. Above all, don't give in to Satan's lies. He wants you to believe life might be useless, you have no friends, you're a failure, or, you, or just that you don't even matter. But don't allow the enemy, Satan, to control even one second of your thoughts. You do matter to Jesus, you and I both, or you and I all. And he is our best friend. He longs to heal our hearts, and he wants us to be happy. Now, Jesus says in Jeremiah 29, 11, and I'm quoting from the New King James Version, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Unquote. Love for God and our commitment to him is not based on our feelings. So when we, you have a down day, keep moving ahead, step at a time, one step at a time, and push that devil away, off to the side. Your Lord and your Savior is willing and ready to help you choose self-control. Keep your thoughts on Jesus and believe in him. You know why? Because he believes in us. We hopefully are learning that when our world crumbles around us, that we don't focus on the crisis. We should focus on Jesus. And as long as you and I focus on him, we have nothing to worry about. This sinful world is full of roadblocks and pitfalls, all orchestrated by our enemy known as Satan, and to keep you and I from the only one who can save us. But don't let the devil deceive you for one moment. Whatever difficulties that your day may bring, don't spend time, as I'm using the word regurgitating, every depressing detail in your mind. Nor does it help to keep telling anyone who will listen until the actual experience becomes so dismal, all just seems hopeless. This does nothing to fix the problem. 
and it won't make you feel any better either. Instead, I suggest talking with God as earnestly as you would tell your best friend. And once you've shared your troubles, then relax. Take a deep breath and trust God to take care of you. I think Randy said that very eloquently as well during Sabbath school. And I was going to comment, but I thought, that's in the middle of my talk. I can't really say anything at the moment. But he, the good Lord, is the only one who can give you and I the strength to face each day and the confidence to go forward without fear. Every day is a beautiful day when your best friend is known as Jesus. When our own troubles seem too much to bear, it's easy to start questioning God as to why they are happening. Why is he letting the pain go on and on? And why doesn't he heal me? And why can't he just get rid of my, of my enemies? And why not just fix things right now? But when you look at the lives of many Bible characters, we can see that God is patient and his timing happens to be perfect. For instance, think how Joseph must have felt betrayed by his own brothers, sold into slavery, falsely accused, and then thrown into prison. No one would blame him if he got angry and felt like God had forsaken him. However, Joseph trusted God. He stayed faithful, and his reward was great. Instead of asking God why, ask for strength. Instead of wallowing in despair, have faith. Instead of doubting, trust in Jesus. God loves you. Gave his only son to die on a cross to save us and is looking forward to eternity with you and I in heaven. Be patient. It's worth the wait. Amen. Many people don't understand how to, in my opinion, there's many people out in my world anyway, that don't understand how to communicate with God. They pray without even an ounce of faith that God actually hears their prayers. The question has been asked over and over how, of me, how do you know when God is speaking to you? Maybe you've been asked that question as well. And the answer to me is the more time you spend in prayer and the study of God's word, which is right here, the more you will recognize the prompting of the Holy Spirit. For instance, when you first meet someone and they call you on the phone, you might not recognize that person's voice. But after you've become friends and called each other a countless number of times, you only need to hear, hello, and there is instant recognition. So it is with God, in my opinion. The more time you spend with him, the closer you'll become and the more you will know his voice. And if you're still unsure whether it's God's voice impressing you, then double the time you spend alone with him. It's in those quiet times that you will hear his voice the loudest. And in conclusion, God gave each of us the gift of friendship. But he wants us to choose our friends wisely. That's why, in my opinion, it's important to look to Jesus, in our opinion, I'm sure, to look to Jesus as our example. He, Jesus was friendly. He was friendly with everyone. But he carefully chose his friends and his disciples, who were his closest companions. Everyone 
in my opinion, needs a friend, someone special that we can trust, who knows our faults and weakness and loves us anyway. The kind of friend that we can depend on, trust with our secrets, and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they'll never betray our confidence. Real friends give without expecting anything in return. And they'll be there in bad times, not just the good. Usually when it's usually it's when you're going through your darkest days that you find out who your true friends really are. And your friends draw you closer. They draw you closer to God. So evaluate the friends in your life. Are they a positive influence or are they dragging you down? Ask God to help you choose friends who will draw you closer to him. The life of a committed and surrendered Christian is the most joyous, satisfying, and peaceful journey that you and I can take. Of course, that doesn't mean that our lives will be without pain or without heartache. But when we're walking with Jesus, we give our burdens to him, for they are much too heavy for us to bear alone. Jesus stands ready to remove our guilt. He stands ready to forgive our sins and to bury them at the cross. We must not allow Satan to shed even one cloud of doubt on our relationship with Jesus. Anytime the devil tempts or tries to make us doubt God, we should say out loud, Jesus, help me. The mere mention of God's holy name, I believe, will cause the devil to flee. God loves us with an unconditional everlasting love that frees us from the fear and sin. Free in Jesus means we are free of all the stuff which was used this morning. And I'm going to use it here even though the word junk was what I wrote, but I like stuff better. Thank you, Ben. Free in Jesus means that we are free of all the stuff that is weighing us down and separating us from our Savior because we have given it all to him. It's no longer our problem. It's God's problem. And when we increase our devotional and worship time, we will grow even closer to our Heavenly Father. And it is then that we will start to understand his deep love for us. If we fully surrender our hearts, which in my opinion is a process, but if we fully surrender our hearts and lives to God, we will experience true joy. Amen. I'll have a different uh, message for you come April, I hope. Uh, our hymn of commitment, if you would please rise. Uh, and we're going to sing together number 547, Be Thou My Vision. Please rise. <laughs>
we make hundreds of decisions every day of our lives, but how often do we go and ask the Lord to help us with those decisions is a, deci is a point that only you know between you and the good Lord. I hope it doubles, triples, or quadruples regardless of what that number is. And again, have a glorious Sabbath day. I love you all. Amen. Thank you.